Warning, the following podcast contains adult language and childish comedy. Listener discretion is advised. And now, please adjust your headphone volume to an unreasonable level and enjoy the most dynamic and electrifyingly entertaining podcast ever to conquer cyberspace. This is Amish Baby Machine. Hello, friends, and welcome to the most powerful podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. I am your beautiful host, Dags, and now let's go to our first banana co-host, Mike Rez. Hey, what's up, Dags? Hello, flock. I hope everybody had a good week. It's a beautiful day, and what do we call it, the the flock of hood? Flock. It's all flocked up. We're in the hood. Tell us where you are. Describe it. Use rich, delicious words. The greenery that I'm surrounded by is rich and deep. There is a uh, sprinkler cascading water all over the grass seed right now. The breeze is nice and gentle through my, well, I guess my lack of hair now. Update on the hair. I got a haircut. Um, and uh, we're hoping that the, uh, the breeze doesn't take over the microphone too much today. We're going to try to catch the flyovers here in uh, the, the, the neighborhood of, of St. Paul, uh, where, where I am part of the flock here in Minnesota. Powerful flyovers. Yes, there's going to be a C-130s and F-16s streaking through the sky, celebrating, honoring the healthcare workers of Minnesota. It's going to be powerful. Hopefully, we'll pick that up. If not, I'll insert powerful sound effects. <laughs> Next best thing. Yes. Yes, we're excited. Powerful show today. We enjoyed a couple movies. We're going to talk about that. Also, Cinco de Mayo. Mike Rez enjoyed a powerful beer. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for tuning in. Now, Mike Rez, mm-hmm. I think everyone is talking about the powerful, giant Asian. Hornets that have invaded the United States of America. Now this Isn't is a, crazy. Yeah, it is. Former they had a powerful former subspecies called the Japanese giant hornet, but now Correct. they're a known, aka the murder hornets. Yeah, well, you know us us in the uh, in the scientific community like to refer to them as Vespa mandarinia. Uh, you know, just because uh, that's what we do. In, Vespa, in science. yes. They were named yeah. after powerful Italian scooters. That's right. That That's a little known fact, actually, right there. Uh, the, these things, I don't know, they something out of a, a horror movie. But um, I think this is going to be one of those situations, Dags, where it's all, it's all fluff and not much else because it's, it's as scary as they sound. Yes, powerful name, Murder Hornets. My idea is to have a murder of crows attack the Murder Hornets. Oh, wonder who would win in that street battle. Crows are powerfully intelligent. They are. They yes. remember people. Just don't quote them. Yeah, so we have uh, the, the Asian giant hornet or the Murder Hornet uh, was spotted. A dead one was spotted in Washington. And uh, so I was reading on this the story that was written that started the whole murder hornet fiasco here this past week, and they kind of misled you because they made you believe that the the honeybee hive that was decimated in the story was found in Washington as well, but that was found in Canada last year. They weren't quite clear on the location of the beehive uh, as in relation to the body that they found. Why are you such a buzzkill? Uh, We're being invaded by murder hornets. They're going to kill us all. It's like a powerful sci-fi movie from the fifties. Nothing can stop the murder hornets. Did, uh, do you think it's kind of like the virus where once it was spotted, it was actually been here a lot earlier than people thought. 
and that it's probably everywhere right now and not just in the one spot. Are you a conspiracy theory person? I can be. It depends on the on the theory. And I think for the murder hornet, we've got to assume that they're everywhere. They are everywhere. They're powerful. They're huge. Maybe we can have uh, the Chinese drones attack the Chinese hornets. What do you think? That would be kind of interesting to see. Would we make the the drones bigger than the hornet, or would they be the same size? It would just be little dots flying in the air. That's a good question. I don't know. Because my powerful research, the subspecies was formerly known as the Japanese Asian hornet, giant hornet. So I'm confused, but your name Vespa, the Mandarin, which is Chinese. Uh, I think the the last part is, but Vespa is Vespa is, is Italian. So well, I think, I think we've got it's a, a multicultural yes insect so, here. Yeah, so it's Italian, it's Mandarin, it's Chinese. This is a really messed up creature, isn't it? It is. It's but you know, it's got a cool name. It does. But so we have the powerful uh, hornets. It shouldn't be fi- yeah. hard to find their nest, though, right? Because they're like two feet long. So they're probably in yeah. like a giant hornet condominium. Yeah, I, you would think. But I, I heard the rent of the condominium is just through the roof. Oh, my the God. Associ- the association fees are high, too. Powerful. The hornet condominium. Yes, the Asian hornets, the killer bees. Where are they right now? Because it used to be the killer bees were coming up from South America. Yeah, what's what happened to them? They never really killed as many people as people were afraid of. Now, I want to know the killer bee versus the murder hornet. Who wins? Oh, I I have to give it to the murder hornet based on the story that came out. I mean, it sounds like two murder hornets can take out an entire beehive by themselves. But the powerful uh, Japanese honeybee, what they developed a powerful swarming defense. Mm. So what they yeah. do is uh, the murder hornets send out a couple uh, dudes, you know, just to see right. what's going on. Powerful scouts. They and attack the, esen- the essential bees. Yes, they're uh, essential. They're working during the COVID crisis. So these hornets attack the nest, send out powerful pheromones, and then their other buddies come. But what the what the Japanese honeybees did is they came up with a defense where they swarm surround the murder hornet, beat their little wings until they create powerful heat and uh, lack of oxygen and they kill the murder hornet. Well, I think they've got it down then. That's what we're going to have to do. So I think, yeah, the killer bees are going to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, I call not eating the, the wings if it comes down to the humans having to swarm them. So you'll have the drummies? Oh, yeah, definitely. Got to eat it down to the bone, though. Don't leave any meat. Powerful. Speaking of partying, Cinco de Mayo. Well, first, I just, I wanted to, to tell the flock about the... We, we actually got a list of the, the names that the focus group rejected for the murder hornet. Whoa. Yeah. Hold and, on. Uh, this just in. These were names that were rejected for the Asian giant hornet formerly known as the Japanese giant hornet. What are these names? All right, so Murder Hornet was the one that won, but the focus group rejected a couple of, of names. I just want to, I think the flock needs to know. The first one they rejected was 187 Wasp. 187 which, Wasp. Yeah, which we all know that 187 is the penal code for murder. Whoa. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the other one that was rejected or one of the other ones was bloodshed bumblebee bloodshed bumblebee yeah that one had a a little grotesque so that of course you know with the word blood in it you don't want people to say that a thousand times a day no but you know the the nerds are going to say well actually it's not a bumblebee a bumblebee can only sting once and then it'll die right of course you know there's there's nerds in every for every topic we love the nerds we do uh the next one that was rejected was the Jack and Yellow Jacket. The Jack and what? The Jack and Yellow Jacket. The ja- that you know, sounds yeah. dirty. It does, but it's it's highly scientific. All right. So, uh, and then the the next one was the Butchering Bee. The Butchering Bee. Yeah. And those were the names that were rejected. The other four. You know, my favorite uh, butcher is probably Sam the Butcher. Oh, Sam the Butcher. He was good. Uh, I heard uh, 
he and Alice had a had a little thing going. Well, they did. Why the fuck didn't he ever marry her? Make her an honest woman. Oh, you know, all he, yeah. All he would do is come over to the Brady's when they were at work. Did Mrs. Brady work? I don't even know. I don't think she did. Did she? I don't think she did. Why the hell did she need a housekeeper then? It's hard to keep up with twelve kids. Yeah, but they can take care of themselves. You know, you got Mike Brady hard at work designing cool buildings. And then Carol Brady's at home watching the goddamn soap operas. Yeah. And then that's why you need the, the housekeeper. Yeah. And then you had, of course, Sam, Sam the butcher coming over and doing his meat deliveries. <laughs> I think that was a euphemism metaphor. I don't know what that means. Synonym. Antonym. Antonym. Wasponym. Oh, powerful, powerful. Thank you for listening. God love the flock of Amish. God love Mike Rez. We love everyone that listens. Make sure to check us out on Twitter at Amish B machine, all our social medias, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you listen to this powerful podcast, please leave a review. Five star is the best review. It will unlock the secrets of Mike Rez's new haircut. (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna, I was going to get into the Cinco de Mayo, but let's talk a little bit about how you embraced your baldness. Yeah, today or yesterday uh, was the day was the day that uh, we embraced it. We just uh, got got a pair of hair clippers. Father in law came through, and uh, we threw on an attachment and went to town. That's uh, that's the new look right now. I'm still getting used to it. You know, when you, when you change your hairstyle, you got to get used to it it's uh we're in that phase right now how are the lady friends reacting how are the women uh well the one that matters really likes it um and Your i haven't mom? seen any others <laughs> okay the two that matter really like it uh i haven't seen anybody else because you know we're still in lockdown so so are we're you gonna sti- have to wait and see are you still holding on to the hat at work for sure no why is uh, that uh, cause at work, there's lots of grease and grime and dirt flying around. You know, you could get wow. a, an oil, an oil drop on your head and we don't need that in the hair. Powerful, manly job. Mm-hmm. Paper mills, dirty job. So is the beard coming back? The beard is coming back. We are on week two officially as of yesterday. And, uh, it's just as if I had it trimmed at the barber. So we're, uh, we're all ready. It, don't, it doesn't take long for me to grow facial hair. So, wow, you are quite virile. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to need you just, just shave the melon all the way down. Take, there's no, just take the guard off the clippers, you know, (laughs) just take it down. Go for it. Trust me. The ladies will love it. (laughs) Wow. We're hearing powerful birds outside. You are outside enjoying powerful wilderness of the twin cities. Yeah. We're about T minus 11 minutes from the start of the flyovers. And if they how fast do those planes go? I think they're starting in Duluth, and they're supposed to be down in Mankato before noon, I think. Isn't I that think, the schedule? Yeah, I think like 20,000 miles per hour. It's like, my God. You're going to go from Duluth to Mankato. If, for the flock that don't know, that's if you were to take a car ride from Duluth to Mankato, you're looking at four hours. That's quite can, a buggy ride. Yeah. So if you can travel that in the air in less than an hour, that's, that's amazing. Now, you don't have an official beer review, but let's talk about what beer you enjoyed on Cinco de Mayo. All right. So let's uh, explain. I don't have an official beer review because of this whole swing shift thing with work um, on afternoons as we record this. So can't drink before work. We're trying to be a little responsible. But last night when I came home for Cinco de Mayo, I enjoyed a couple of Modelos, just the regular Modelos in the squat bottle, uh, the clear the clear glass bottle. Not to be confused with Larry Mondello from Leave It no. to Beaver. No. God, I love Larry Mondello. Yeah, so we uh, we enjoyed that nice uh, Mexican beer. And unlike most Mexican beers, this one is actually made in Mexico. Whoa. So, yeah, not a lot of people know that. Just some, some fun facts here about Mondello. Uh, it's the only Mexican beer that you can buy here that's actually still made in Mexico, in Mexico City. Now, it's part of a, a conglomerate that is uh, owned by a New York company, Constellation Brands. 
but they also own Corona and Corona is manufactured here in the United States, at least the stuff that we get. But yeah, it's uh it was, it's a good beer. It's a fun tasting beer. I actually only drink Modelo on Cinco de Mayo, apparently going through my, my past uh, social media posts. Uh, it seems like I'm quite the fan of Modelo around Saint pa- uh, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, the the brewery itself is 94 years old, or 95 years old. Uh, but the the beer itself, uh, the actual recipe, um, started uh, because of an Austrian uh, emperor. Whoa, uh, Arnold! Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, started I'm going to need you beer. to drink the Modelo immediately. Stop whining and drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had uh so that that was a little interesting fun fact that i found was uh that the act the original recipe was started in austria and then uh somehow purchased and brought to mexico and that's where it's been made ever since i pronounce so, it mejijo mejijo that's a it's a good pronunciation thank you thanks for enjoying my pronunciation yes yeah, so you don't get that at every, anywhere else but you get it an amish baby machine now mike rez you are actually mexican amish is that correct that is correct. 50% Amish, 50% Mexican. God, I'm the same way with Italian. I'm Italian Amish. Are you? Powerful, powerful grouping today. Yes. The Amish, the Mexican, the Italians. That's why this is the most powerful podcast ever created. The Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. Now, Modelo, is that a Pilsner? Um, I, I consider it a pilsner and see, this is, so this is a thing. So now you're getting into like corporate owned beers. There's not a lot of information out there that they're going to release. Unlike the, the craft beers that, uh, we've enjoyed the past couple of weeks where you can find basically almost everything but the recipe itself. Uh, but I would consider it a pilsner. It's not a, a porter or a stout or anything. It's, it's, uh, if you like, like a Corona beer itself, you'll like Modelo. So stout, then for, stout, let it all out. These are the beers that we talk about. Come on, bitch. I'm oh, talking to you. Yes. Powerful. <laughs> Powerful. Yes. Yeah, so I don't have any IBUs. I don't That have, was, uh, hold on, hold alcohol. on. I got to finish my joke. All right. That was from the, <laughs> that was from the band Tears for Beers. Thank you. <laughs> Powerful. All right, that was worth it. I shouldn't have cut you off. I apologize. No, that's all right. We cut each other off. <laughs> Who cares? Just like the powerful murder hornets cut the heads off the goddamn U- European honeybees. Yeah. Did you know that the European honeybees were considered a threat uh, to our uh, ecosystem way back when they came here too? What were our honeybees? Uh, they were lame. So they mm. were, they were hard workers in the beginning and then the capitalistic bee society took over. Oh my God. <laughs> the indigenous honeybees. What oh. a fucked up world we live in. All this tribalism, know. all this war, war. What is it good for? Absolutely cool. nothing. Thank you. Thank you for your, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. I'd like to know, uh, you know, like when the Europeans first came over here, what type of species of bees or, or anything for that matter? Because even our, uh, like some of our squirrels that we have now aren't indigenous to this country, uh, but they were brought over from Europe. But we got Europe back because we brought over some of our gray squirrels. So the gray squirrels, the black squirrels, what is your favorite squirrel? I enjoy the albino squirrel. I do like those, but we have two red squirrels back here in our backyard. And uh, they're both named Kevin because for lack of creativity. And that way I don't have to be like, well, which one is that? So I just say that one's Kevin. Yeah, they're ginger. <laughs> they're ginger squirrels. So they have to be uh, named a powerful Irish name like Kevin. So they, uh, we got a couple of those. Uh, and I actually like those a lot better than the gray squirrels. So because the red squirrels don't get into much and they just kind of are. But the gray squirrels dig, they chew through your garbage can lids jump on your roof, stare at you creepily. Do you have flying squirrels? Not yet, but those are next, actually. Those are coming right behind the the murder hornet. We're going to have bombardment squirrels. We should have flying squirrels. Hey, rookie! Powerful Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. 
That's where Rocky and Bullwinkle were from. Talking meese? Are those a thing yet? Meese. Yeah, more than one moose. Oh, I thought you were talking about mice. No, 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 not mouses. That would be nice. Powerful. God, we're having a good time today. We are. I'm very relaxed today. I'm sitting back in the barn. It's a different vibe. Do you enjoy it? I do enjoy it. I was going to say, someday I'll be back in the barn. Well, you better. Yeah, When this is all bullshit anyway. Just come on over. <laughs> I don't believe any of it. You reach a point where you're like, eh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Are you having a beverage right now? Yes, I've got a Cameron's coffee in my hand. Okay, I'm going to have you do the the toast, the cheers today. Ooh, friends, right. friends flock of Amish. Please raise your drinking glass, your cup, your hand, whatever. If you're not drinking, just pretend you are. Mike Reza is going to do a powerful toast to the flock of Amish. All right, flock, raise your glass. Your powerful beverage that's in your hand or will be in your hand later. Make sure you raise your glass at some point today. And we hope you enjoy the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. Cheers to everybody. I'm enjoying a Cameron's Breakfast Blend Coffee. Gags, what do you have? I'm having, I, I need to make something up cool. Make something up. What am I, All pretend right. what I'm drinking right now. You've got a, uh, a Brandy 7 on the rocks, double. Whoa. Yeah. And uh, you're enjoying your third, is what I'm going to say. Yes. Number you're three. Nice and relaxed. Yeah. Number three. So raise your glass, Flock, and enjoy. Powerful. Thank you. Cheers. Now, we enjoyed a couple of films, not at the cinema, because we're all trapped at home. Tell the fans of Flock of Amish what movies we enjoyed. Oh, let's see. We enjoyed, we enjoyed two wonderful movies. Well, I guess wonderful is subjective. Both of them Netflix originals. Uh, which at the time I wasn't aware of until I started watching them. I knew they were on Netflix. Didn't know they were both Netflix originals. Six Underground was the first one. And the uh, second one was Spencer Confidential. Uh, Spencer Confidential came out this year. Six Underground came out last year. And uh, which one would you want to talk about first, Dags? Let's talk about the shit show uh, Six Underground first. Okay. <laughs> All right, that it was. This is a Michael Bay film that uh, was shot last year uh, through lots of, well, I guess a couple of exotic parts of Europe, uh, mostly in the Middle East. Um, and uh, it's a story of six, we'll call them ghosts in quotations, because that's what they call themselves in the movies. People that have uh, faked their own deaths so they can become mercenaries of sorts. Uh, and work for this uh, billionaire who's played by Ryan Reynolds, who goes by the name of One throughout the entire movie. A uh, couple of different stars in this one, Ryan Reynolds being the, the big name, uh, Ben Hardy's in it, Dave Franco, brother of James Franco. He's oh, that's it. Arnold's friend, right? Yes. God, I miss Franco. Uh, and then uh, Corey Hawkins is probably somebody people will recognize if they if they saw the movie straight out of Compton. He's the one that played Dr. Dre in that Whoa. movie. And he plays a, a sniper uh, from the a special forces unit in this one. But they all fake their own deaths so they can become mercenaries. Uh, this is considered an action thriller. And uh, the other movie we're going to talk about is considered like an action comedy. But I think Six Underground had more comedy in it than the other one. Um, basically my thoughts on this one, well, I guess let's finish talking about the plot. So, uh, basically what they're trying to do is start a coup d'etat, trying to overthrow this dictator from the country of Turkestan. And, uh, the whole plot of the movie is trying to, to get the dictator's brother out of, uh, some kind of prison in Tokyo at the top of a skyscraper and bring him back to Turkestan to overthrow his own brother. Uh, and that's that's the plot of the movie. Um, my initial thoughts are that uh, all this character is for Ryan Reynolds is just an extension of the Deadpool character. 
Ryan Reynolds. He's the same in every movie. I'm Ryan Reynolds. I talk like this. It's real funny. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm, I'm yeah, he's sending too. <laughs> yeah, he he does it. You hear this? Just the Canadian come through. I'm Ryan Reynolds. I'm Canadian and, and clever. No, this yeah. this is a movie that I was thinking I would have walked out of. Yes, exactly. It's just oh my god! It's just the it's just shit. And yeah, it, you know, like mindless action, I can handle it. Fast and Furious a little bit, but it's just like colors, and they crank up the colors on the movie, and the they do the cool slow mo, and and they have the numbers, and it's it's just like I don't know, trying to be some cool Guy Ritchie movie or you know, um, Lucky Number Eleven. I you know, it reminded me of a bunch of shit, but I, I couldn't even handle it. Yeah, it's uh, it's in your face. It's it's loud. Um, it's violent like it 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 didn't know if it wanted to be grotesque violence or just violent violent and i think that it kind of goes back and forth now there's a couple of cool scenes like the car chase scene was pretty cool um that was probably the the best part of the movie and then the fact you know the the one with the magnets and i don't want to give it away too much but that one was all right that just because it's different you don't really see that I was kind of thinking outside the box, but yeah, the rest of the movie, like you said, if he, this would have been one you walked out on. It's been getting destroyed by critics. So, you know, I don't have a problem with stylized movies too, if they're a cool style, but that was just stylized to be stylized, you know? Right. It's, it's, it's just like, it's so generic. It's just like they ran it through some filters and everything. And like you said, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I just I couldn't get into it. I tried. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you'll be happy to hear that this was the first of a franchise for this. Oh wow! Movie. Yeah. So Netflix is going to waste even more money. <laughs> seven <laughs> Seven Underground. Like oh God. The prequels you know, and the sequels. Yeah, it's going to be something depressing because they did set up, you know, like everyone's backstory. You just got a quick brief backstory on everybody. I. I can almost guarantee you there's going to be more of that to come. Let's just get right into the ratings. <laughs> Out of five buggy wheels, what are you giving it? I'm giving it a two, and that's that's being generous. Wow. Thank two you. Two buggy wheels. Two buggy wheels out of five. I'm going 1.5. Ooh. Yeah. And that's even being generous. I think too. <laughs> and I can see a lot of people, you know, if you just leave it on in the background, you have the cool car chases and the cranked up saturated colors you know it, it's like it's like a sexy ambient background video at a cool right. a cool hip nightclub would be playing that in the background right in between the <laughs> yeah in between the rick james music playing oh yeah let's break That's it up a- let's get into song of the day it's a powerful segue thank you thanks for enjoying my segue now, I, I brought it back to the 80s for song of the day. 1981, Rick James, Give It To Me Baby. Good song, by the way. Nice choice. Of course, Thank everybody, you. you know, these days you hear the name Rick James and all you think about is the Dave Chappelle sk- sketches, uh, which uh, are pretty funny. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> From uh, Eddie Murphy's brother, yes. Yeah. So, but uh, Give It To Me Baby. A song by Rick James taken from his album Street Songs, which was his best album uh, and his most popular album that he released. The song made it to number 40 or spent two weeks at 40 on the Hot 100. And it spent uh, five weeks at number one on the R&B chart. And then some of the other songs on that uh, album that people know, Super Freak and Ghetto Life, were both on that same album. So that was his most uh commercially successful release uh was sampled on uh, other other songs of course thriller sampled it uh let's get it started by mc hammer sampled it fight the power by public enemy sampled it and uh, there's a host of others but those are the three that people would know yes the powerful flock, the flock would know yes powerful baseline from thriller mhm the horns, though, the horn section in um, Give It To Me, Baby, that's what I enjoy. Yeah, it's uh, it's something different that, that brought out that funk that uh, people 
hadn't heard and a nasty lot back then. funk. That yeah. smelly nasty funk up in here. Powerful. <laughs> yeah. Now do you I know, do enjoy the funk. Do you know Rick James' birth name? Off the top of my head, I do not. Tell the fans of Flock of Amish Rick James' birth name. All right, Flock. His uh for all of you uh trivia buffs out there, if it ever comes up at a bar, his real name is James Ambrose Johnson Jr. I love his middle name, Ambrose. It's, it's a, a powerful cool name. name. It is Ambrose. Yeah. So you can't get uh, can't get too much cooler than that. Now he had uh, Rick James had had a checkered past. Um, I'm one who can look at people's past and their and their uh, talent. Uh, talent wise, genius. Personal life, what a mess. Uh, but uh, he is no longer with us. Passed away in 2004 at the age of 56 due to heart failure because of a lot of drug and alcohol use. Uh, but a uh, powerful song of the day. Thank you for enjoying that. Yeah, I love Rick James. A lot of times, musically wise, I mean, I, I know he was fucked up in his uh, <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> but yeah, I that Give It To Me Baby, um, Jay-Z sampled it. And I was one time I was rolling in the buggy with a young cat, and he didn't even realize that was Rick James. He thought it was Jay-Z. Oh, sure. That's like when uh, when Post Malone released his uh song with um ozzy osbourne over the past couple of months and everybody thought that post malone found this really old dude who could sing Ooh, powerful premonition mentioning post malone yes powerful so it, it was uh it's interesting it's kind of funny when you think about even the songs i enjoyed back in the 90s sampled songs that my parents listened to so, which I think was kind of smart because then a lot of the songs that I listened to, my parents listened to because it sampled songs that they listened to when they were my age back in the nineties. It's just going to keep sampling till it's just one big sample. Yeah. It's going to be the same song in about 50 years. Powerful. All around the world. The same song. Around the world. Yes. Daft Punk. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying song of the day. Rick James, give it to me, baby. What made you pick that one? Just out of curiosity. It's power. You know, I just, I have a powerful brain. I just, I can't stop it. I get just inputs and outputs. It's, I need, I need to give it to the flock. I need mm. to just give it to them. Give it to them. Yeah. And they're going to get it. It's just powerful, isn't it? I, I, it's what I say all the time. Yes. Now, you want <laughs> someone to give it to you. Yes. If you want Dex. someone to give, yes, I will give it to anyone that wants it. <laughs> and speaking about giving it to people, tell the fans of Flock and Amish about your powerful show. All right. My powerful show. Uh, my powerful show is the 945 show. It's a podcast that interviews indie, indie music makers, singers, songwriters from the Twin Cities area here in Minnesota. And uh, just released a new episode this past week. Uh, so you'll want to check it out in my interview with Timber Ghost, a uh, singer songwriter, uh, and uh, albums available on Bandcamp. Uh, but check it out. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Anchor, um, a whole host of platforms. It's the nine, N I N E hyphen 45 show. And you can follow me at Mike Res Radio on Twitter, and you'll always get links to when the new shows come out. Yeah, you're going to need to follow him on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at Amish B Machine. Please support this powerful podcast. We do have powerful merch. We do have a mask that sells out all the time. Right? Isn't that crazy? Yes. And if you buy this powerful mask, they will donate a mask to uh healthcare workers. So it's kind of a win-win situation. You help support us and then you help support a healthcare worker with a mask. So do it, yeah. check it out. Also Patreon, patreon.com and links on amishbabymachine.com. We're working on a piece of shit computer here. If you could, if you could dig deep, help us out. If you can't, we still love you. If you want to support this powerful podcast, amishbabymachine.com patreon.com buy our merch god love you now mike rez first movie we did not enjoy no tell us about the second movie that we viewed 
the second movie uh, that we viewed is called Spencer Confidential. It's another Netflix original. This one was released this year. Uh, now, this one is labeled as an action comedy, um, which was kind of funny to me because, yeah, there's a couple lines, but it's not a comedy. I wouldn't consider it a comedy. Action, yes. Uh, not a comedy, though. But it's about... Uh, actually, I should say that it, it's loosely based on the book Wonderland by Ace Atkins. And the only part that it uh, really uh, sticks to in the book is the names of the characters. <laughs> uh, the, that's it. <laughs> yeah, why do they even do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have no idea. I mean, it's so stupid. I don't know if it gives them a spark, a creative spark. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do this, but we're going to change every goddamn uh, detail. <laughs> And yeah, just keep except, some cool names. Except for one word and the names. God, I hope this, uh, when this podcast is made into a movie, all I hope is they keep your name, Mike Riz. So do I. I hope that too. Um, but yeah, so uh, the star of this movie is Mark Wahlberg, who for the 47th time just this year alone plays a Boston police officer or former Boston police. What is with him? Why does he always have to play a Boston police officer in all of his movies? We get it. You're from Boston. Well, I think it's like Arnold. Well, Arnold at least tried. He had the same voice in every uh, movie. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Even when he was Russian, he had an Austrian accent. <laughs> I have to go home and feed my parrot. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable how many times this guy plays a Boston police officer. Well, it's def but, it's definitely he's that's his wheelhouse. He sounds the best when he does that. It's the true. most real. True. And yeah, I, I call him Marky Mark. I know he gets mad, but I can't help it. Yeah. Well, Marky Mark was joined by another rapper uh in this movie. Post Malone has a, a small part in it. Um and uh it's small, but it actually kind of turns out to be a little bit of an important role. I mean they could have given a couple of those lines to somebody else and it would have been just the same, but they wanted post Malone in this movie. I think really bad. It reminds me of uh, tone Loke's appearance in heat. Yeah, exactly. It's cool. when <laughs> they have a rapper. Yeah. Make an appearance. So, um, but, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark plays detectives. Uh, I don't, goes by Spencer through the whole movie. Did we don't never find out his first name? I don't think, uh, I don't know. but the big, Beginning of the movie, he goes to his captain's house, beats the crap out of his captain, ends up going to prison for a couple of years. Uh, and then he gets out. Uh, he's met by his old um, partner, Bo uh, played by Bokeem Windbine, who's a, who's a good actor. I actually like him. Uh, he's been in quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people will recognize him as one of the special forces guys from the movie The Rock. He was in that one. Um, but yeah, he, uh, comes out of prison, um, is going to start a life in Arizona as a trucker, uh, gets hooked up with this old mentor who's a, uh, owns a boxing gym played by Alan Arkin, uh, who's another fabulous actor. Yeah. Alan Arkin, you know, you put him in there and it just bumps it up a notch. Yeah. He's well, you know, cool. Speaking of people who play the same character. Alan Arkin kind of plays the same character, but for some reason I'm for very forgiving for him because he's just, he makes me laugh. He could be doing anything. And I just I'm like, well, it's going to be kind of a good flick if Alan Arkin's in it. Well, they reach a point where actors, where they turn into their character, you know, like Tom Cruise or, uh, I like, you know, I like, like Al Pacino, you know, he's ooh, Al Pacino in every movie, <laughs> right? but, but I still <laughs> dig him. So you're right. Alan Arkin is the same character, but I still dig him. Yeah, he just reached that age where he's just the old dude in a movie with a different name now. So, um, but yeah, so they, uh, after, you know, Marky Mark comes out, Spencer, um, he's going to start a new life. Uh, some, some twists and turns take place. It becomes a story about crooked cops and, and drugs and, and drug cartels that wield machetes. And uh, he's got to navigate this whole thing. And th this whole time, so his boxing mentor is also renting a bet out to uh, Winston Duke. And Winston Duke and Marky Mark team up to try to foil this plan. Winston Duke uh, was in uh, Black Panther. He was the uh, other tribal leader in Black Panther. 
Yes, powerful. Uh, for, yeah, for the flock that uh, wanted to know who he is. So he, he's a big dude. Uh, he's an aspiring MMA slash boxer in this movie. Um, has some, actually he he steals a scene in a couple of couple of scenes. Um, it was a good casting to have him in this one. I think I, I enjoyed his character and I enjoyed what what his character brought to the movie. So what were your thoughts on this on this movie? Were your your first uh, impressions and then what were your final impressions? So I enjoyed the movie. It's your straightforward, like you said, stereotype cop Boston whole thing. But Marky Mark, I like Marky Mark. And that's where he's at his best doing that kind of character. So I dug the movie. It had, it had kind of like a Beverly Hills cop vibes to it. So Beverly yeah. Hills cop was more comedy, but it had some serious stuff going on there too. So that it kind of gave me that vibe. I liked, I liked the scene where the dog attacks Marky Mark. That was funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. No, I, I liked it. <laughs> It was fun. It, it's a cop movie. It's got some stuff going on. It's got the, you know, the, all the tropes, the stereotypes, whatever you want to call it. You know, the bad cops, good cops getting his ass kicked, but I liked it. It was, it was a fun movie. It was fun to watch. I didn't, I didn't try to go too deep into it. You know, I, you know, analyze the hell out of it. I'm trying not to do that shit, but like with the, with the other movie, six underground, I, I, I couldn't, it was just shit. But this right. one, this one is not, it's not a great movie, but it's, it's fun movie. It's, it's a good, like they used to call it popcorn movie, but we don't go out to movie theaters anymore and eat popcorn. But I liked it. I had a good time. A lot of good, you know, cop stuff. If you enjoy cop movies, buddy movies, you know, I, I had a good time. It was fun. Yeah, this one wasn't bad. I mean, it was a lot better than the, the other one. Um, but uh, yeah, it. I think it's more of a more than just a background movie like the other one. This one, you actually kind of have to sit down and watch to get what's going on. Um, you yeah, know, it's not full of explosions and colors and and loudness, uh, so you kind of have to follow the story and what's happening. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot better than the other one. Maybe that was I enjoyed it more because I saw the other one first. <laughs> oh yeah, so, compare it to it. Yeah, I mean, if you watch Six Underground first and then watch Spencer confidential. You're definitely going to like Spencer confidential more. Um, but it, it is what it is. It's a buddy cop movie kind of get to the bottom of a, of a case. His, his girlfriend in the, in this movie kind of, she, she's a good character. Although I wish there was more of her in there cause she's, you know, stereotypical Boston, uh, female, you know, in your face with the accent type. Did you enjoy um, her? I actually did. Uh, her character was kind of funny. She probably brought more comedy to the movie than than was intentionally thought she would, but she was a good uh, breakup of some, you know. Easy on the eyes, serious. too. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. She uh, won a uh, comedy competition in uh, 2008, too. So I remember oh, nice. her for a stand-up, yep. Yeah, last comic yeah. standing. They, uh, the street that they that they filmed on uh, the the house that he goes to, to stay in after he gets out of prison. That was actually the same street that Mark Wahlberg grew up on in Boston. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's, he's literally at home in the movie. It's, it's right. a fun movie. You said it's not as much comedy. It's more action thriller. Yeah. They should take it out of the comedy category. I mean, that's how much comedy is not in there. But there are some funny parts. Yeah, I, I consider I, it a comedy. Though. Yeah, I think they call it comedy because you know the, he's just his attitude, like, "Oh, well, here we go again. You know, another fight. I'm going to get my ass kicked." <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, you know, Hawk in the movie, he had a funny line that said something like, uh, "Every time you go in, you get your face beaten, but you always come back with more information. You need to start considering." <laughs> a different approach or something. Yeah. Like that. I think that's why I liked it too, because it didn't take itself seriously. There's a right. cop movie. There's fights. I had a good time. Yeah. So it, it was good. Give the fans the flock of Amish here score. Uh, I'm giving it three and a half buggy wheels. And I think that extra half is just because I watched it after I watched six underground, but three and a half is pretty solid. 
I, 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 I'm going to give it a three and a half too. I don't know. You know, that maybe we should spend a little time in between movies to cleanse the palate. Cause I went, I went a little too back to back watching those. Oh, dude, yeah, it was, we did go pretty close to watching, watch or these two movies. And then when we recorded this powerful episode, so yeah, the problem is uh real life gets in the way. Right. But that first movie was so shitty, you know, you got to have something to take the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> right. It's like uh beer tasters, you know, when you're tasting beer, you just kind of smell it, swish it, spit it. Yes. And then cleanse your palate and then start over. Yes. We need some, uh, clen- we need some, uh, film or some smell, some coffee beans or something to cleanse the palate. Yeah. Don't eat the coffee beans though. No. I enjoy them though. Powerful. Yep. 3.5. That's why I'm going to give that movie. It was fun. In fact, I imagine myself too watching that in the movie theater too, enjoying popcorn and some delicious chocolate stars. They don't have those anymore. I enjoy the chocolate stars. I forgot about the chocolate stars. Oh, they're powerful. (laughs) This is a little uh, pro tip for you guys. Combine popcorn with chocolate. You'll thank me Mm -hmm. later. Powerful combination. Dump Powerful some synergy. And some buttered popcorn. Oh. Yes. That's awesome. God, I had a good time today. Another powerful episode. Thank you, Mike Rez, for being on this powerful episode where we talked about shitty movie, a good movie, and some delicious Cinco de Mayo beer and evil killer hornets. And don't forget Rick James. Biatch. Yes. Give it to me, baby powerful thank you for listening to this powerful episode we ask you to just do one thing please tell a friend get the word of mouth out on this podcast and until next time you've just enjoyed the amish baby machine pop culture podcast thank you for listening to the amish baby machine pop culture podcast it is available on apple podcasts spotify stitcher and everywhere else fine podcasts are found Please support our podcast through Patreon and and shop our merch at AmishBabyMachine.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This has been an Amish Baby Machine production.